A warm greeting. Today is Friday, August 2, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. This morning, I would like to update the forecast related to Invest 97, which is a strong tropical wave currently located over Cuba and is projected to become Tropical Storm Debbie in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico and very near Florida. It is important for residents and visitors of the state of Florida to prepare for the potential impact of a tropical storm from Saturday to Sunday. Additionally, this future cyclone also poses a threat to the coastal regions of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, which we will discuss further in this video. In the infrared satellite image, we can see that the tropical wave appears quite organized this morning. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, there was considerable uncertainty about whether it would take a path over Florida or move further west, possibly reaching the Florida panhandle. However, fortunately during the day yesterday, the models have good consensus on the trajectory and intensity of this future tropical storm. It will first affect southern Florida with rains during Saturday hours, and is eventually anticipated to make landfall on some point on the west coast of the Florida peninsula, potentially as a moderate to strong tropical storm. The most significant effects in western and central Florida are expected during Sunday hours. In the next 24 hours, Invest 97 will bring heavy downpours over Cuba. Model projections estimate rainfall between 40 to 60 millimeters during the next 24 hours. Here, you can see the trajectory forecast from specialized models. The center of circulation of Invest 97 is expected to pass just over the northern coast of Cuba during the next 24 hours, and by Saturday morning, it should move near or over the Florida Keys, where it is anticipated to strengthen into a tropical depression. By Saturday night and Sunday, it is projected to become a tropical storm when it is located just just over or to the west of Tampa. It will eventually turn north-northeast, affecting northern Florida and the coast of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. It is important to note the good consensus among specialized models regarding the trajectory, unlike the uncertainty we had yesterday morning. Therefore, after several days of speculation on whether it would take a path to the east of Florida or reach the Gulf of Mexico, we now have a defined consensus and forecast this morning. Basically, the entire Florida peninsula should prepare for the impact of a tropical storm, and residents of the North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia coasts should stay alert, as they could experience tropical storm conditions, and we cannot rule out the possibility of it becoming a hurricane next week when it is located southwest of North Carolina. At least the interaction with land over Cuba in the next 24 hours will not allow Invest 97 to strengthen much, but it will then move over extremely warm ocean surface temperatures through the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. You can see in this image the reddish colors representing temperatures reaching up to 30 degrees Celsius. Therefore, those 36 to 48 hours projected over Gulf waters will be sufficient for this system to strengthen into a moderate or strong tropical storm before making landfall in Florida. This is why intensity models and consensus have a moderate or strong tropical storm just before reaching the west coast of Florida. Once it crosses over land in Florida, it is expected to weaken, but once it moves over waters to the east of Georgia and South Carolina, it could find favorable conditions to begin intensifying again. We cannot rule out the possibility of it becoming a hurricane before continuing its trajectory northeast over the Atlantic. Let's look at the latest projections from global models. Starting with the American model, the GFS, you can see that by Saturday afternoon it has a tropical depression moving over the Florida Keys and maintaining a parallel trajectory to the west coast of the Florida Peninsula. The American model projects it will reach near or over Tampa as a tropical storm by Sunday morning. Then, it shows the system moving over waters to the east of Georgia by Monday morning where it begins a strengthening process and, by Tuesday night, has a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane passing very near the coast of North Carolina. Therefore, it is important for residents from Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and especially Florida, to stay very alert to the evolution of this disturbance. For now, we project that tropical storm conditions will be felt throughout the Florida Peninsula and the coasts of South Carolina and Georgia, and potentially in eastern North Carolina. We cannot rule out hurricane conditions. The GFS model then shows a trajectory towards open Atlantic waters. I repeat, effects should begin on Saturday for southern Florida regions, for central and northern Florida between Sunday and Monday. Tropical storm conditions for the Georgia and South Carolina coasts between Monday and Tuesday, and tropical storm or hurricane conditions for North Carolina between Tuesday and Wednesday. Additionally, let's see the projection from the European model. You can see it also develops a tropical depression around noon on Saturday near or over the Florida Keys, and eventually reaching Florida Big Bend as a tropical storm by Sunday night. Like the GFS model, the European model forecasts it will move east of Georgia and South Carolina, where it could begin to re-intensify, and eventually, 
the European model shows a moderate or strong tropical storm entering North Carolina during the afternoon or evening of Thursday. Therefore, although we have high confidence in the forecast for the next three days, and it is anticipated to reach Florida as a tropical storm, there is still some uncertainty about exactly what effects will be felt across eastern Georgia, South Carolina, and specifically North Carolina. The German model also projects it will arrive as a tropical storm, in this case entering near Florida Big Bend during Sunday night. The UK model also agrees with this forecast. We can analyze the different trajectory and intensity scenarios in the ensemble members of the GFS model. You can see that all of them have a weak or moderate tropical storm while moving over western and northern Florida, but there is uncertainty about what will happen once it is in southwest Atlantic waters. Generally, all members show strengthening possibly into a hurricane by mid-next week, and although most of them maintain a trajectory parallel to the North Carolina and South Carolina coasts, eventually moving over Atlantic waters, we do see some members that even have an erratic trajectory where it could move overland in South Carolina or North Carolina, perhaps as a hurricane. These are the projections of the GFS model members, and the European model members generally agree with these projections. Let's then talk a bit about the expected effects across the southeastern United States in terms of rain. Models are projecting 2 to 5 inches of rain affecting sectors in northern, central, and southern Florida. And depending on how close the trajectory is to the coasts of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, between 2 to 5 inches of rain is projected from Monday to Thursday next week. Therefore, we definitely have a high risk of flooding across all these sectors. In terms of wind gusts, let's see the following animation from the GFS model. You can see that some tropical storm force winds between 40 to 55 miles per hour can affect sectors in western, central, and northeastern Florida, including cities like Tampa, Deltona, Orlando, and Jacksonville. These tropical storm winds are expected to affect the region during Sunday hours. Once it moves towards the east of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, the GFS model shows this system strengthening into a hurricane and some tropical storm winds can affect the coasts of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Also, remember that with its proximity to North Carolina, we cannot rule out hurricane winds affecting the North Carolina coast between Tuesday and Thursday next week. Besides the rain and wind, strong waves are expected to affect the coasts of Florida, North Carolina, and Georgia with waves between 8 to 10 feet in height, but for North Carolina, the waves could be much more significant, even over 20 feet in some sectors. So, take great caution along the coast, avoid visiting the beaches, and keep in mind that coastal erosion is expected which could endanger some structures. Well, here on Hurricane Info, we begin special coverage where we will be recording at least two videos a day to keep you informed about Invest 97 and the future Tropical Storm Day. To make sure you don't miss any of the videos we'll be recording over the weekend, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. Well for now, I say goodbye, and I will record a new update tonight, Friday. See you later.